Congregation, please rise. Welcome in the name of Jesus, the Savior of the world. We are gathered to worship, to proclaim Christ crucified and risen, to remember before God our beloved brother Jacob, to give thanks for his life, to commend him to our merciful Redeemer, and to comfort one another in our grief. Let us join together in singing one of Jacob's favorite hymns, The Old Rugged Cross. You will find the words printed in your bulletin. So I'll cherish the old rugged cross till my troll at last I lay down I will cling to the old rugged cross and exchange it someday for Oh, 
of our Lord Jesus Christ, the giver of that crown, and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. O God of grace and God of glory, we remember before you today our brother Jacob. We thank you for giving him to us to know and to love as a companion in our pilgrimage on earth. In your boundless compassion, console us who mourn. Give us faith to see that death has been swallowed up in the victory of our Lord Jesus Christ, so that we all may live in confidence and hope until, by your call, we are gathered to our heavenly home in the company of all your saints. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. The congregation may be seated. Sorry. Dear ones, family and friends, we welcome you to Lord of Life Lutheran Church, to those who are gathered here in this space, to those who are with us online, to those who are listening outside. For many years, we have had the privilege of being the Borgstrom's pastors, and gathering in their home church today was really, really important to them. So thank you for packing in and squeezing in and making room and being good with being squeezed together today. It was important to them today because it was an important place for Jacob a place where he grew in faith and love and understanding, a place where we all had the opportunity to walk together in life. Now we walk together in grief, and with grief 
and through grief, holding on to the promise of the resurrection for Jacob and the hope of a day when our broken hearts will beat strong again with life and our weary souls will sing loud of love and our aching minds will be comforted with memories and blessed by glimpses of Jacob all around us. As we take time today to remember and to celebrate Jacob's life, we begin by remembering his baptism and the promise that he was given in Christ, the promise of a new birth, the promise of forgiveness of sin, the promise of life eternal. We light a candle to give thanks, to give thanks to Christ, the light of the world, for shining through Jacob and into the darkness of this time. And we pray for the light of Christ to continue to shine into the darkness that surrounds, confident that the darkness will not ever overcome it. In just a moment, I'm going to invite a couple different people up to share some reflections, some memories, and some stories of Jacob. We're going to begin with a moment to think about his life in the FFA. It was a hugely important part of Jacob's life. He loved the structure. He loved the formality of it, the family that it created, and the focus in his life. He served as the Brainerd FFA Chapter Sentinel his junior year of high school, 2020 to 2021. Magnus Nelson wrote that Jacob was a great sentinel who was always welcoming and encouraging to everyone. He wrote he would strike up a conversation with everyone. Does that surprise you at all? Jacob deeply embodied the mission and the vision of FFA, learning to do, doing to learn, earning to live, and living to serve. I invite Audrey Rosecrans to come forward at this time. Audrey is the current Brainerd FFA chapter president. Current and previous FFA members, will you please join me in the Brotherhood Pledge? All FFA members, why are we here? Please rise. Honor agricultural opportunities and responsibilities and develop those qualities of leadership which an FFA member should possess. Thank you. As we mingle with others, let us be diligent and labor just in our dealings courteous to everyone, and above all, honest and fair in the game of life. All right, this a little better? <laughs> I'm not that good on a mic like my brother. <laughs> All right, so good morning. Um, I just want to thank everyone for being here today to celebrate my brother, Jacob Lawrence Borgstrom. Let me start out at the very beginning of memories. I remember the day mom and dad told me about you. I didn't really know what to think. I remember listening to your heartbeat, singing you songs from Barney, and reading you books in mom's belly. I remember wanting a little sister so bad. <laughs> we went to the ultrasound and my parents asked if I want, wanted to know if it was a boy or a girl. Obviously I said yes. Dad told me, Caitlin, God already made the decision, so once you know, we can't change it. The nurse looked at us and said, it's a boy. I was like, um, what? 
A few years down the road, I figured out I wouldn't have wanted, a, I wouldn't have wanted a little sister, due to the fact of having to share hair products, makeup, bathroom time, and some other girly things. Another few years down the road, when we were potty training, we were on our way to St. Cloud, and most likely going to Olive Garden, as it's your favorite restaurant. You had to pee so bad. So we said, here's a bottle. <laughs> then the Toyota 4Runner hit a bump, and I got sprayed. <laughs> Everyone thought it was funny but me. I remember being on car rides and you would sing constantly over and over, Don't Cut the Grass, your first song. We would say, Jacob, stop hogging the airwaves. What would I do now for you to be hogging the airwaves? I remember when we got horses in 2014, I still had to saddle your horse. One of my favorite memories was when we were at a horse show and your horse Sunday bucked you off three times before she finally stopped. Recently, you went to a branding with Ruger. That day you left, you called me all in a panic because Ruger wouldn't get in the trailer. So, went out in my PJs at six o'clock in the morning and helped you load them. I did not pack your tack and was thinking over and over what you might have forgotten. You got home that night and you were scrambling looking for something. I asked you what was up and somehow your billet strap came off. You had to ask a saddle maker for an extra and you couldn't remember what it was called. In my mind, I said, dang it, I should have packed for you. Remember when I asked you why you were walking funny? You told me you got kicked in the knee. <laughs> I'll forever hold these memories and so many more. I'll miss my best friend, my secret keeper, my trail riding partner, hauling hay partner, and the one that I could always count on. Bubba, I promise I will take care of Ruger on Sunday. I promise I will always have the hay up and dry. You had the Friday night crowd on the palm of your hand, but why did you have to walk away in the middle of a song? We are Jacob's grandparents, Sherry and George. Over the past two weeks, we have witnessed the outpouring of people and friends. Okay, who Jacob knew and how he touched their lives. Jacob was kind, caring, God-loving, full of life, and smart, and a beautiful old soul. Jacob has touched so many lives, and we are so proud of all his accomplishment in his 19 years. At the age of two, three, and four, he had several Bob the Builder boots and was so proud. He always wore them on the wrong feet, but he was confident they were on the right feet. <laughs> he was so excited when we made him a Bob the Builder cake, so he had to add on a backhoe cake too. And then he graduated to his cowboy boots. <laughs> How he grew from that shy little boy who went to, wanted to sing to his sick grandmother in the hospital, but was too shy, so you went behind the curtain and sang with your soft little voice. Then all of a sudden you were the young boy singing at church, and then to a young man who sang on the stage at Midsummer Music Fest. What an amazing performance. You were so excited to be a part of and sing at Lakes Jam. Um, he, worked, he liked working at the soup kitchen. He also was the kid who would sit by someone that was alone at lunch hour at school. He wrote a beautiful song and sang it for Grandpa and I at our 50th wedding anniversary. We will cherish it forever. It was so special to see how much you admired, how much you admired and are like your Grandpa George. It was seen when you spoke to him about history, mechanics, sharing tools, or asking questions as you would talk a mile a minute. I couldn't get a word in. Jacob, thank you for having us meet you for supper that Monday night. You ran ahead to open the door for us, as you always did. And when we were ready to leave, you gave us a hug and said that you loved us. We will carry that in our hearts forever. When he was very little, like around four or five, he always would say he couldn't wait to get to heaven. Now, Jacob, you can chase your dream as you wrote in your song and in 
and go to the place where the grass is greener. We love you forever, Grandma and Grandpa. Thank you, Amy, Brandon, Caitlin, and all of Jacob's family for so generously sharing Jacob with all of us. I had to use the chainsaw a couple days ago to cut up a tree that fell in a storm. I picked up the chainsaw, and there was the chainsaw wrench tucked into the handle in its place where Jacob had left it for me the last time he used the saw. It was just a little thing, but it seems that every time I do something at the ranch, there's a sign that Jacob was there, is still there. Jacob showed up at the ranch about three years ago. He was smiling as he told us how he had driven past the ranch so many times, told us that he loved ranch work and wanted to know if there was any work he could do. Work. Jacob reveled in it, whatever it was from fixing fence, to feeding horses, to spreading manure. Jacob liked to work. But when he was around, work wasn't really work. Putting up hay has always been a little stressful for me, but Jacob was the most enthusiast, enthusiastic hay partner you could have. He made it fun. When are we going to start putting up hay, he would ask. You could hear him singing over the noise of the tractor and the baler. Here's a little poem by the 13th century poet Rumi that makes me think of Jacob. There are a couple lines about music and talent and a reference to a pick. If anybody has a guitar pick, you can hold it up now. It could be Jacob's guitar pick. The poem is called, Has Anyone Seen the Boy? Has anyone seen the boy who used to come here? Round-faced troublemaker, quick to find a joke, slow to be serious, red shirt, perfect coordination, sly, strong-muscled, with things always in his pocket, reed flute, worn pick, polished and ready for his talent, you know that one. Have you heard stories about him? Pharaoh and the whole Egyptian world collapsed for such a Joseph. I'll gladly spend years getting word of him, even third or fourth hand. That poem is 800 years old, but it's kind of timeless, like Jacob. At home, we said that Jacob was the sun in Sun Up Ranch. He just made everyone feel better with his optimism, with his energy. Every year we have interns at the ranch helping with the colts and other ranch work. They're usually a long way from home, a long way from family. Jacob, in his famous way, made all of them feel welcome, like they were part of the family, just as Jacob was part of our little family. He'd make sure there weren't, they weren't always stuck with the old folks, that they found some connections and entertainment during their time here. One of the sayings you'll hear around the ranch is Jacob is a good heart. His music was a big part of making those connections. He loved sharing it. He appreciated almost any kind of music. I'd send him obscure songs by obscure artists and many times he already knew them, tucked away in his vast repertoire of songs and musicians. Merle, Johnny Cash, Guy Clark, the Traveling Wilburys, Jacob could do them all. It felt good to have him ask me to sing Folsom Prison Blues with him. At our harvest dinner, he was thrilled to get up on stage to play a song with the hired band. They said they often got asked to let someone sing a number and usually went along with it. But this guy was really good. I'd like to leave you with another little poem by the German poet Rilke, who imagined the very being of man as a great song. It's called I Live My Life. I live my life in growing orbits, which move out over the things of the world. Perhaps I can never achieve the last, 
but that will be my attempt. I am circling around God, around the ancient tower, and I have been circling for a thousand years, and I still don't know if I am a falcon or a storm or a great song. Jacob's orbit took in all of us here. His song is a great song. So it turns out uh, Coors Banquet's my new favorite beer. And according to Jacob, he would say, oh, heck yeah. And I cannot come close to mimicking the way he can say that, but I, now every time I hear those words said by anybody, it's going to come through in Jacob's voice because it was just so much different than I've heard it from anyone else. And by the way, Brandon, I couldn't sneak 700 of those in here today, so I'm sorry for that but we'll find another chance to get 700 served somewhere else. I met Jacob first on a four-wheeling ride at HCRC in the fall of 2022. Jason Hines had been telling me over and over that I've got to see and hear this kid perform. I get that on occasion and generally don't pay a lot of attention to it because everyone thinks their friends and families are all the best singers in the world. But I wish I had sooner. I probably would have got to know Jacob even more than I had. Anyways, after a long day of riding, I ventured to the campfire where Jacob was doing a little strumming. It was his voice that first caught my attention, but it was his ability to capture the crowd with his storytelling that kept me intrigued. An uncommon trait that was completely natural to him at the age of only 19. He can be best described as an old soul. From that day on, I tried to book him anywhere that, we, that would take him, and selfishly at that, I just wanted to keep experiencing Jacob Borgstrom. He started playing pre-jam parties for us, and you could tell that he wasn't just there for himself. He truly loved to see people enjoy his craft. So much so, he would show up at pre-jam parties featuring other artists. I remember at the next one after he performed our first, he was there by himself, just at a table, hanging out, and taking it all in. I think it was that point that I knew he really wanted it, and everything just snowballed from there. He, be he began to hang around the Wayside Boys, and began to jam with them, and with Hayden, and even record songs. These guys all just got to meet each other over the last eight, seven, eight months. He wasn't afraid to mix it up with anyone on stage. He proved that point to the extreme when Kelly Iris happened to be visiting and I asked if he wanted to work with a hip hop rap artist. He didn't even flinch. Oh, heck yeah. There's that voice again. So with little notice, a Zoom call, no rehearsal, he joined Kelly Ch and Chad, the guitarists from Wayside, who are predominantly a rock band, and they put together a two to three hour show at the sidetrack. They even wrote a song together in just five minutes, right before they went on stage. I'll never forget the joy that boy showed. He was like a kid in the candy store and just giddy as hell. Fast forward a week or so, Haley James was coming into town. Haley had won New Artist of the Year for Midwest CMO the previous year, and this year she was named Female Vocalist and Songwriter of the Year. Well, I asked Jacob if he wanted to do a duet with her performing something in the orange. Haley had just released her cover of the song a few weeks earlier, and Jake had been covering it as well. I told him, I need to know if you're willing before I reach out to her. That was the first time I had sensed any nervousness out of him. I wish I could remember his exact words, but it was something along the lines of, oh, heck yeah. <laughs> Followed by, do you think she really want to perform with me? Haley said yes, and not only did they perform that song together, they performed two more throughout the night, including Wait in the Truck, where only Jacob knew how to play the song. 
and he did it with her guitar while they both sang. A little over three weeks ago, he took the first huge step, his first huge step and performed at Midsummer Music Fest Gone Country. This was the first time he played with a powerful PA setup and no words can describe how awesome he sounded. He finished his set and next up after him was Aaron Simmons. Aaron, coming off his nomination for Male Vocalist of the Year, just happened to be listening when Jacob was performing and he decided to invite Jacob up on the stage for a song. At one point, Jacob hit a note that had Aaron doing a double take. Jacob never ceased to surprise no matter what environment he was thrown into. Later that night, he popped into our campground to play for anyone who wanted to show up. We requested the song religiously. By Bailey Zimmerman. A fairly, a fairly new song that he had never rehearsed. Not knowing the song very well, he stared at his phone while he began to play it. He started off a little timid, and then he picked up momentum and belted out a huge chorus, and it gave me the chills. It was classic Jacob. I tell all these stories because what I think amazes me the most, these stories all come from the past nine months. Just nine months. That's all I got to know, Jacob. I know him probably the least of anyone in this room or people outside of this room. I can't imagine the number of stories y'all have. His family needs to hear all of your stories, whether it's today when you get a chance a little bit later, a month from now, or nine months from now, they need to hear them. They're gonna get a lot of support during the next month or two, but it'll begin to get quieter and quieter around their house. It's all of your jobs to make sure it doesn't get quiet. Keep Jacob loud. I'm going to be playing for you guys today. It is called His Name is Jesus by Cody Johnson. Um, growing up, I was taught that Jesus isn't someone high up above that we'll never ever see or never ever meet. I'll be able to shake his hand and say, you're my friend one day. So that's what I think of him as a friend. At the mention of his name, walls crumble, lives are changed. In the midst of life's temptations, he's there. They 
tributes uh, to Jacob and there'll be an opportunity uh, later on out in the uh, tent for uh, anyone who'd like to share their thoughts and reflections their memories of Jacob uh, on this day you know some might say that a beer can is inappropriate at a funeral that wouldn't be me though because I was trained by German Lutherans German Lutherans who did love their beer a lot. And in fact, as we turn now to read the 23rd Psalm, I'm reminded of a story that I learned when I got to go be pastor with those German Lutherans who started, started a seminary. And it started out in a little country church by the name of St. Sebald. And I kid you not, every Sunday in the summertime they would come together and hold church and then from there, they would get on their wagons and they would go down to a place called Kleinlein Hollow, this beautiful, beautiful, idyllic valley with some pasture land, a little bit, not a lot, but a little pasture land, and this wonderful still creek that flowed through there. Oh, and by the way, there also happened to be a brewery down in that uh, valley. And on Sunday, all the beer was free. All the beer was free, and I think, what a wonderful, what a wonderful idyllic vision. I've often wondered how many would join the church if all the beer was free <laughs> and the party after church. But we're going to say a psalm together here that speaks about green pastures and still waters. I invite you to join with me in the bold verses. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. A, readings, a reading from Romans, the eighth chapter. Do you think anyone is going to be able to drive a wedge between us and Christ's love for us? There is no way. Not trouble, not hard times, not hatred, not hunger, not homelessness, not bullying threats, not backstabbing. None of this phases us because Jesus loves us. I am absolutely convinced that nothing, nothing living or dead, angelic or demonic, today or tomorrow, high or low, thinkable or unthinkable, absolutely nothing can get between us and God's love because of the way that Jesus, our master, has embraced us. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. I'm going to invite Stephanie to come forward at this time. Is Stephanie here? As a part of our readings, we wanted to share one of uh, Jacob's favorite readings as well, which is the poem Footprints. <clears throat> Footprints in the sand. One night I had a dream. I dreamed that I was walking along the beach with the Lord. Across the sky flashed scenes from my life. 
For each scene, I noticed two sets of footprints in the sand, one belonging to me and the other belonging to the Lord. When the last scene of my life flashed before me, I looked back at it. I looked back at the footprints in the sand. I noticed that many times along the path of my life, there was only one set of footprints. I also noticed that it had happened at the very lowest and saddest times in my life. This really bothered me, and I questioned the Lord about it. The Lord said, sorry, I read that wrong. I questioned and asked the Lord about it. Lord, you said that once I decided to follow you, you would walk with me all the way. But I have noticed that during the most troublesome times in my life, there was only one set of footprints. I don't understand why, when I needed you most, you would have, you would have leave, leave me. The Lord replied, my child, my precious child, I love you and would never leave you. During your times of trial and suffering, when you see only one set of footprints, it was then that I carried you. I invite you to please stand to hear from that one who carries us through our life. The Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. John 3, 16 and 17. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son so that everyone who believes in him may not perish but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Friends, you may be seated. Well, dear Brandon, <laughs> peek over the flowers. There you are and Amy, and Caitlin, and David, Jacob's dear, dear aunts and uncles, grandmas and grandpas, cousins galore, extended family. Man, there are a lot of you in this clan. And to Jacob's closest friends, his dearest companions, and to all of you heartsick fellow travelers on this journey, I bring you grace and peace from our Lord and our Savior Jesus. Amen. A few years ago, when we gathered as a community because a young man had taken his own life, what I said to the hundreds of grief-stricken friends and family and community members that were gathered together then I sadly say again today that while it is true that it takes a village to raise a child, and look at this gorgeous village that has raised this child, it is also true that it takes a village to bury a child. It takes a village to bury a child because this is simply too much to bear on your own. It's too hard. It's simply impossible to fathom what has happened and what comes next. And so while not one of us wants to be here today, not one of us wants this to be our reality, not one of us wants to actually believe that Jacob has died. Given all the givens, none of which we wanted or asked for and would give anything to change. Given all the givens, there is no place else to be today than here, together. Together in this place, this place that Jacob loved, this house of God where he grew 
It was here in this place that he encountered his friend, Jesus. Here in this place, he knew he was loved. He knew he was forgiven. He knew his voice and his song and his life mattered. He knew he was wrapped in God's grace and not alone on the journey. I pray that today, in this place, through those sitting nearby you, or those all around you, or in the words, or the songs, or the silences, you too encounter Jesus, your friend, and know that you are loved, and you are forgiven, and your life matters, and you are wrapped in God's grace. I've had the immense privilege of being one of Jacob's pastors since his family joined Lord of Life Lutheran Church in November of 2011, when Jacob was seven years old. He was twinkly-eyed and adorable, helpful and respectful, and one of those kids that just knew more than most, felt more than most, lived more generously and lovingly than most. He made friends everywhere and with everyone. You are a testament to his gracious and expansive heart. One of my favorite stories of Jacob was when he was attending a confirmation overnight retreat here at the church. We were playing Romans and Christians, as we often did and still do, and he had been caught while trying to find the other Christians hiding in the church, and he was put in jail. Now, Tim Slinger, our youth director, and I were both the guards of the jail, and in order to get out of jail, you had to answer a Bible trivia question or do something that we asked of you. Having no clue that Jacob had an amazing voice and loved old country gospel, we asked Jacob to just just sing something for us. And without hesitation, he busted into the entire version, old gospel hymn, I Saw the Light. And with his whole heart, his foot stomping to the beat, a smile literally from ear to ear, he sang the whole song for us and anyone else who entered the room. I would sing it for you, but I could never, ever do it justice the way Jacob did. But the words of the chorus go like this. I saw the light, I saw the light, no more darkness, no more night. Now I'm so happy, no sorrow in sight. Praise the Lord, I saw the light. Since Tuesday afternoon, when I received the call that Jacob had attempted to take his own life, and throughout those long and grueling days in the intensive care unit in St. Cloud, and Amy and Brandon, I just have to take a moment and to thank you. With your hearts broken wide open, you allowed us all into your grief in a way that gave all of those who waited and watched, you gave them permission to weep and to wail and to wonder. And I thank you for that, for making it okay to question and to cry and to be dismayed and to despair and to be afraid and still filled with faith. How something so broken could also be so beautiful is a deep mystery to me and one that we all be held in that space with you. But since that day and every day since, I've come back to those Hank William words. I saw the light, I saw the light. No more darkness, no more night. Now I'm so happy, no sorrow in sight. Praise the Lord, I saw the light. And I see Jacob singing them. 
And I trust that they are now true in a way for him that we who are still on earth can simply not fully understand. For Jacob, no more darkness, no more night, no more sorrow, only light. For us, that can't seem further from reality. And I know that we are all wrestling with what we cannot understand, what we cannot fully comprehend, and what we'll never completely know. The questions are endless, and the answers evade us. The hows and the whys, they disrupt our thoughts, and they leave us feeling awfully fragile. There are so many questions that I would give anything to be able to answer for you. But we won't ever know the depth of Jacob's struggle and the mystery of his final moments. They will remain just that, a mystery. And in the mystery of life and death, I can think of only one thing to do, and that is to cling to the old rugged cross and to cling to the mystery of our faith that proclaims that God loves the world and through Jesus, God is healing the world and that the very worst things that happen aren't the last things that have to happen and are, in fact, the very places where God will join us and weep with us and then get busy making something new. We live in a broken world, my friends, and we're here right now because of that, because of a world broken by accidents, broken by resentments, broken by vicious words and cruel actions, We live in a world broken by fear and isolation, broken by anger, broken by hardened hearts and unforgiving souls. But broken isn't the only reality. I think about that old tractor of Jacob's, the one that's out in front here today, the one that was with us last night, the one that Jacob loved so very much. He was 13 when he received it as a gift, and it didn't work. It was broken. Maybe in the eyes of some, worthless. But with time and patience and gentleness and hard work and a lot of grease and dirt under his fingers, which he loved, because it looked just like grandpa's. He got that tractor to run, and it became the place where he felt closest to God. The broken became beautiful in that place. And John 3.16, which is one of Jacob's absolute favorite Bible verses, it's a reminder of that truth This one verse, it tells it like it is. God loves the world. And through Jesus, death death doesn't get the last word. Broken isn't the only reality. That's about as clear a promise as we can get. No wonder Jacob loved it so much. He liked things clear, black and white, straight talking. Maybe every day, At 316, you might just want to stop and remember that God loves the world and that God loves you and that you are not alone. And maybe at 317, you might want to remember that God loves the world and through Jesus, God is healing the world and that the broken can become beautiful. The last time that I texted Jacob was on the Friday before he died. 
And I asked him, how's your spirit holding up? And he replied, my spirit is like an old tractor. You know it's going to break sooner rather than later, but you ain't got the time nor the money to fix it. So you turn the key, praying every time that it'll start once more and get you through the day. When it came to the actual tractor, broken wasn't a problem, but it was an opportunity to get to work and to work with others to make something beautiful. But when it came to his spirit, it seemed Jacob felt he had to do it all on his own. He forgot that broken isn't the only reality and that something beautiful can happen when we reach out and invite others in and ask for help. I think he forgot that we are God's old tractors we are God's old tractors, broken, and we don't always work quite right. But with love and tender care, and grace and mercy, and probably a whole lot of grease and dirt under God's fingernails, God's able to do beautiful things in and through his broken people. So young people, I want you to hear me for a moment. You do not have to do this on your own. And especially you cowboys out there, and I know there's lots of you, this journey isn't just for you to have to bear on your own. We cannot bury another child in this community. If your spirit is feeling like an old tractor, if you're overwhelmed and it feels like it's just too much, if you don't even know where to start, I want you to reach out. I want you to look around this space today. We get through this dark valley together. We get through this dark valley together with God's help, one step, one day at a time. Because you see, that's, that's how Jesus works. In and through you, and through me, and through the neighbor, and the stranger, and quite possibly anyone that we encounter along the way. That's how Jesus is healing this world where there is a lot of brokenness and there is a whole lot of pain, but it is not the only reality. And Jacob knew that. He knew that. He sang about it. And in so many ways, his songs and his music and his presence was that healing presence of God for you and for others. He was part of making the broken beautiful in so many ways. And so I wonder now, how might we take up that call? How might we take up that call? After Jacob was airlifted to St. Cloud, a friend of the family's and I sat on the steps of the Borgstrom's house. She looked at me and she said, well, He's going to write a hell of a song about this someday. I do imagine that there might be a heck of a campfire happening right now and a good old-fashioned jam session happening in heaven, and that song has already been written. But Jacob won't be able to write one for us here. But maybe we can write it. Maybe we can write it with our lives, with our love, with our light. And from our broken hearts, somehow, someday, a beautiful song will be sung. May it be so. Amen. Yeah, man.
time I tried to make it on my own Every time I tried to stand and start to fall All those lonely roads that I've traveled on There was Jesus When the light bell came crashing to the ground when the friends I had were nowhere to be found I couldn't see it then but I could see it there was Jesus in the waiting in the search in the healing and the hurting Like a blessing buried in the broken pieces Every minute, every moment Where I've been and where I'm going Even when I didn't know it Or couldn't see it There was Jesus Full as man Forgiveness at a price I couldn't pay I'm not perfect so I thank God every day There was Jesus In the waiting, in the searching, in the healing and the hurting Like a blessing bed Every minute, every moment Where I've been and where I'm going Even when I didn't know it I couldn't see it There was Jesus There was Jesus In the waiting, in the searching in the healing and the hurting Like a blessing buried in the broken pieces Every minute, every moment Where I've been and where I'm going Even when I didn't know it Or couldn't see it There was Jesus There I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray to the Lord who is merciful and full of compassion, saying the words, hear our prayer. Most gracious God, our brother Jacob was given the promise of eternal life and baptism. Grant him communion with your saints forever. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, your son wept at the death of Lazarus. 
Look with compassion on Jacob's dearest loved ones, now experiencing such sorrow at his death. Grant the tender healing of your love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Living God, source of compassion, our hearts are filled with grief at the death of Jacob. Draw us near to you in faith and to one another in love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Living God, source of compassion, our hearts are filled with grief at the death of Jacob. God of salvation, we remember with thanksgiving all who have died in the hope of resurrection. Surround them with the light of your presence. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Light of the world, we pray for your love and forgiveness to shine bright in the hearts of all who are hurting today. Calm our need for answers. Steady our troubled spirits. Bring peace where there is a desire to blame and serenity in the midst of all that we cannot understand. And fold us in the mystery of your light that we might even now have the courage to shine love in the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. All these things and whatever else you see that we need, grant us, O God, for the sake of Christ who died and rose again and now lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. We're going to sing the song, Light Your World. And if you would like to join in with the chorus, you are welcome to do that.
announcements um, before we invite Crystal to share some words. You, you can stay there. That's, you're good. You're good. Um, we want to take a few moments for some quick announcements. At the end of the service, when we have processed out of the church and placed Jacob's casket into the funeral coach, everyone is invited to stay for lunch. Uh, it's one of Jacob's favorites from Burga's Cafe and Pillager, a hot beef sandwich and mashed potatoes. <laughs> And uh, I just went there a couple days to sample the fair, and it was absolutely wonderful. So I hope you will stay and, uh, and have a time of fellowship uh, to eat. Underneath the tent, there will also be, as I mentioned, a microphone. They'll be set up for people to share stories and memories and reflections. About 3.30, we're going to start to gather to head out to Evergreen Memorial Cemetery, where Jacob will be laid to rest by his great grandpa. Um, and now I'd like to invite you before uh, Crystal um, shares the, uh, the farewell um, to just share in a table prayer since we probably all won't be able to, uh, to share in a table prayer out there in one at the tent. And it's, uh, it's a favorite of the families. Please join with me. Come Lord Jesus, be our guest and let this food to us be blessed. Amen. Amen. Jacob, our companion in faith, we entrust you to God. Go forth from this world in the love of God who created you, in the mercy of Jesus who died for you, in the power of the Holy Spirit who receives and protects you. May you, May you rest, rest in peace and, peace and rise in glory, where pain and grief, and grief are banished, and, banished, and life and joy are yours forever. Now I call on Rich to read the cowboy prayer. Good afternoon, family and friends of Jacob. Today, I'm going to read a prayer here. But first, I wanna share a few moments. Jay, Brandon and Amy, I am so humbled to be able to read this today for you folks. Our prayers are with you always. Before Jacob left, a couple weeks before, we got to share some experiences he shared 
he had had opportunity to work up in Cass County on some ranches doing their spring works. And he was just so excited about doing that. I guess uh, in my life, a lot of our lives, cowboys, ranch cowboys, rodeo cowboys have been kind of our action heroes. And I think Jake was in that group as well. And this is what leads, probably because of their grit and self-reliance, is probably why we aspire to those people. So this leads us to the cowboy prayer. Heavenly Father, we pause mindful of the many blessings that you have bestowed upon us. We don't ask for any special favors, for we know we can't always draw the best bucking stock or the straightest running cattle. All we ask for is a clean break at the gate. We ask that you watch over us today in this rodeo arena, as well as in the arena of life. Be my wrangler, O Lord, so that when the time comes for me to hang up my hat and saddle and cross that great divide to the country where the grass grows lush green and stir up high and the water runs cool, clear and deep, and we knock on that grand entry gate up yonder that you, O Lord, will say, come on in, cowboy, your entry fees are paid. This we ask in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Dear friends, let us now command Jacob to the mercy of God, our Maker and our Redeemer. I invite us into just a moment of silence. Into your hands, O merciful Savior, we command your servant Jacob, acknowledge we humbly beseech you a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, a sinner of your own redeeming, Receive him into the arms of your mercy, into the blessed rest of everlasting peace, and into the glorious company of the saints in light. Amen. Amen. My name is Jacob Borkstrom. Um, I'm from Minnesota. Uh, today I'm going to sing a song for you guys, a song I wrote. Uh, when I was writing this song, I was looking back at old country songs, and I was looking what all of them had in common. And every, almost every old country song has some sort of hurt or pain. So I thought, well, I'll look at the hurt and pain in my life. And I thought, huh, my life moved on. So here's Life Moves On. Just for 
I will pronounce the benediction and dismissal, and uh, then we will process from the church. You are invited to join in on the chorus of this song, Life Moves On, as it is sung uh, during that procession. I invite you all to stand and receive the blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine on you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Let us go forth in peace. In the name of Christ. Amen. Toughest days, we must prevail.